Hello, hello, beautiful earth angels, and welcome to November and our messages from the angels. I am Elvia Rowe, founder of angelsteach.com, and I am so honored that you are here and that you are listening and that you are wanting to know what your angels have to share with you in this moment through this venue. So I've been guided to share... Um, the last few weeks in particular have been really intense for me, very emotional for me. Um, some of it, I'm sure, is because of this eclipse portal that we are in right now, flushing all the shit out. Um, but I think a lot of people are sensing this shift, you know, this major, I'm hearing seismic kind of shift that is on the horizon. Um, obviously, we have the elections here in the US this month, um, which happened to fall on full moon lunar eclipse. So that's kind of an interesting thing to ponder. Um, and what I wanted to say about this shift, I've been doing a lot of meditating with the angels about it. I've been, um, I've also been listening to podcasts and sort of taking what feels right and um, assimilating it, putting it into my simmer pot. And what I want to really emphasize is that, you know, <laughs> there's a lot happening in the heavens. We've had a lot of planets that are, are that are retrograde, and there's a lot sort of in the stars that is setting us up for this shift. What we don't know is how that's going to play out. And I can't emphasize this enough. There is not some predestined outcome. The only thing that's predestined is that there is a seismic shift that we are all a part of. And the image that I got as I was getting ready for this um, was that it like a like a play, like a stage of a play. And the stage is set. No actors are on it yet. We don't know what's happening uh, with this next phase, this next act of the, the play. Um, but the stage is set. Things are in order. And that's the, that's the foundation that astrology gives us is what that stage is. What happens with all of those props and that furniture and the scenery and everything that's on that stage is yet to be determined. And there are many paths of how that could play out, you know? And so where I want to bring everyone back to, um, as you feel the need, of course, um, and this is something I remind myself of regularly, is we don't know. We don't know how climate change is going to play out. We don't know how the U war in Ukraine is going to play out. We don't know how the political stage is going to play out. We can jump to all kinds of conclusions, absolutely. And it's so easy to do that. And there's so many facts and things out there that help us to jump to those conclusions. But things change in an instant. And there can be a reset button that happens in an instant. There can be some kind of miraculous unfolding that can happen in an instant. And so while it can seem like everything's a foregone gone conclusion, we don't really know. And that's a much more A, realistic, and B, peaceful place to sit in, to rest in, is that we don't know. And that's okay for right now. We're safe for right now. We're okay. For right now, in this moment, if you're watching this video, you're okay. So, and it may not always feel like okay. You could, mind could jump to all kinds of things. Well, I'm really not okay. But if you're breathing and you're able to stay with me, you're okay. And it can be so hard to remember that sometimes. And yet that's where we are invited to rest right now. So I have some fun 
images that have inspired the readings for this month, but we're going to set, I'm going to set things up with you a little bit differently this time. I've been guided to help you, guide you through the one, two, or three choice. And if you've already got that number in your head, go for you. You can skip ahead to the reading that's meant for you. You can also go through this uh, little mini sort of download meditation um, with me if you feel guided to do that and either validate or however you want to use it. It's up to you. So I just got, <laughs> I think I'm a deck addict. Hmm. Anyway, I just got this astrology deck um, and it is by Lisa Stardust and it is really, really amazing if you're interested in astrology. This is a good one. And so I've been guided to pick a card that will sort of help us to um, help you to get that number and to really get the richest message that you can get from this. So I invite you to just settle into your space. Just allow your breathing rhythm to settle, to attain that heart coherence that is your birthright. And it's really interesting because this was the last card in the deck. I don't know if you saw me pick it. I don't know if you could see me pick it, but it was the last card, which says that this is sort of a bookend kind of thing. It's it's about patience, but I'm hearing more it's like a bookend. So this is a structural thing. And that's actually interesting because that's what this reading is about, is about your stage and how you're setting up your stage and what is your structure. Um, you know, how do you keep yourself in this container that feels safe as you go out, go throughout your day? Because, you know, all of the predictions and the astrology and the news and all of that, you know, is and can be very loud. It's what happens in your day to day life, your moment to moment existence that really matters and staying present and in the heart is the name of the game. So the card that came forward and I'm putting on my goggles here to read this, it's the post shadow retrograde. So these cards have a little bit of information about um, different parts of astrology. Um, and this is in the eclipses and transits um, category, which is interesting because I'm recording this as we are between uh, the solar and the lunar eclipse here. Post shadow retrograde. The post shadow phase of the retrograde follows the retrograde, which is actually often a more impactful time for me personally. Um, this phase takes place after the planet has stationed when the planet appears to stop before beginning retrograde and is working its way to the final degree where the cycle began. In this phase, you are clearing up what became undone or was confusing during the actual retrograde. I feel like that's the key here. In this phase, you are clearing up what became undone or was confusing during the actual retrograde. In general, post-shadow retrograde is when you can recover or reckon with what got shaken up during that cycle. So I invite you to take that as input and just, if you are able to put your hands on your heart and that feels right, then you can go ahead and do that. Whatever's comfortable and feels aligned for you Just breathing into this idea that this reading is going to give you information, insight on what needs to be cleaned up, what's been undone. I'm getting the image of the goddess Kali, who is known as a destruction goddess, but that's so that she can create. She is a great creatrix, creatress goddess. So what is it that has been undone in your life? And what more perhaps do you have to do to clean up? And what can start to begin anew? What seeds might you be planting at this time of year? 
in this time of your life. And from this space, go ahead and choose number one, number two, or number three. What number are the angels whispering to you right now? And is there anything else your angels would like you to know before you receive this reading? Good. And with your next breath in, bring your focus and your awareness back to the space of this time, and we will begin. So what I've been inspired to use for the readings this month are some photographs that I took back in 2018 when Peter and I took this incredible trip to Europe. I went on a retreat um, in Provence and Peter came with me and he hung out in Avignon while I was at this retreat and then before and after we just we traveled around France and then up to Amsterdam. and. It was so guided and I have to say it was one of the most magical experiences I think I've ever had. I know I have this bloodline deep connection with France and it just it felt like it really came alive there. So again, these readings are so much about structure and the stage that you're setting for yourself so that you feel safe and held and um, protected and loved throughout this great shift. And this first photograph that I have is of a village, a hillside village. Um, and I wish I remembered the name of the village, and I, I, I don't. Um, but it's just this quaint little town, very, very old, as you can see, built into the side of a hill. Um, and the message with this particular image, if you chose number one, is about building community. So remember, this is about setting the stage. So there's something in your, uh, your community and what is there for you that is not complete. And that's why you're, you're receiving this message. Um, this is about really connecting with your tribe. And what I mean by that is not just the people who show up in your life, but the people who really feed you, the people who really help you to feel alive and are in your corner cheering for you. Now, I get it. You know, it can be hard to step away from some relationships that that's not the case. Um, and you have to do what you have to do. Um, that said, the more that you can build community, and I, I see this, this, all these houses clustered together, like they're huddling together, like they're their their strength in numbers like they're this unit that is there to um to grow together to learn together to just uh gain strength um, as they go through this transition together there's so much green here which uh, just speaks to vibrancy and that wall there uh at the the lower half of the card really speaks to to the best of your ability those relationships that don't nurture you and make you feel supported and whole are you know keep them at a distance as best you can as you are able to step away do that as you are able to have constructive healthy conversation and it feels guided to do that to put up boundaries where it's needed uh, know that that you are supported in doing that again as guided um, it's really important to make our needs known so the bottom line with this card is to stay close to your tribe choose the people that you hang out with very selectively with great intention and you know really surround yourself with people who help you feel strong you know, that's like your spiritual fortress right there. And this could be, you know, in-person connections. It could be a virtual community. You know, whatever it is that's right for you. Combination is usually, um, I think, what works for people. 
Um, but again, whatever it is for you, community is really important for you right now. For those of you who chose number two, this is your image, and I'm pretty sure that this is actually in that same village. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but there's something about this particular image that I just find so captivating. There's so much that's going on here, and there's um, a lot of richness within this message if you really study it. Um, and I invite you to do that. If you followed my videos before, hopefully you know that I'm a huge fan and cheerleader for you really tapping into your own intuitive hits with uh, any of these messages and whatever is in the world because the angels are speaking to you too. So as I said, you know, dig into this or any of the messages um, and just because I say something different doesn't mean that's wrong for you at all own what comes through you and feels like it's coming from that space of the angels. So every time I look at this image, I keep hearing repurpose, repurpose. I mean, there's a lot of different directions that this message could go, but I keep coming back with the angels to repurposing. What that says to me is the bottom line for your structure, take something old, and worn and make it new. So what is it in your life that feels a little tired, but you're not done with it? You know that there's still this energy there. You know that there's still this thing in your life that you're not done with. You haven't finished and yet it's time for it to evolve in relationship with you. Um, <laughs> things that come to mind more physical level I know I keep getting this image of um, you know people taking like an old door we live in an old house um, and I know that people have taken like old doors from old houses and made them into coffee tables or uh, old windows and made them into a table you know there's a lot of different ways that this can go I mean this could be um, in terms of hobbies, this could be in terms of work, it could be in terms of relationship, it could be, again, on the physical plane. But there's something in your life that is looking to stay in your life, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's looking to evolve with you. One thing I do want to mention here is the power of changing things in a physical way so often opens up changes that happen mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So if you're not sure what this means or where to start, look in your physical space and think about what needs to be renovated, what needs to be repurposed, what needs to be dusted off and made anew in your physical space, perhaps just weeding out and clearing out the shit, you know, it can be as simple as that. But, you know, working on the physical can often help to open up what needs to shift mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So we have a dining room that I've been trying to get the paint colors right for like over a month. It's been driving me crazy. I have like four of these little half pint test things and none of them were right the reason is because it wasn't the right time i was trying to push for a halloween party that we ended up having to cancel and so the angels knew exactly what was going on of course um, but as soon as i let go and was like okay i'm leaving this all to you i got the right paint colors so i'm really excited about that but it's come along with a lot of healing and inner work that I've been doing personally through this, as I said, the last um, bunch of weeks. And so I know that that is all tied in with my healing. So it's all interconnected. It may seem like it's easy to put, you know, choosing paint colors in a separate category that doesn't have anything to do with emotional or spiritual healing, but it does. You know, it's all interconnected. You may not see it right away, but it's all part of the fabric of, of life. So, you number two folks, it's all about repurposing. Look in your life and find out what needs to evolve with you. For those of you who chose number three, 
This is when we were back in Paris, and I'm pretty sure that um, actually it was because we were in Paris three different times. It was sort of where we landed, where we came back to before going to Amsterdam, and then where we left from. So I'm pretty sure this is the, um, our third time there, and we were visiting with uh, Gina. Some of you may know Gina, um, who's a family member in Angels Teach Land, big time family member. She's like an angel sister. Um, and she took us to this little arcade. And this image, like number two, has so much going on. Like there's just a lot in this image. And I honestly had a little conversation about the angels, like, you really want me to do this one? And they were, they were pretty insistent. Um, so we're gonna start with the left side of it, uh, over in the um, way left, about the middle of the photograph is uh, a bag with the little prints on it. And the little prints is just such a sweet, sweet story. And I think it begins with this idea of innocence and this um, just being open to whatever is there for us, whatever is the magic that is there for us. And I'm actually gonna keep my glasses on for this one because I wanna see all the details here. Um, you will notice that, uh, of course, Hotel Chopin is in the center there. That feels like a real focal point. It's about creativity. It's about expansion. The door there is open, but you can't really see what's inside there. So there's a little bit of perhaps fear and trepidation about, hmm, what's inside there? Uh, if you look over, and I'm starting to go a little bit back and forth here, but there's an H. Um, in red on the right side on the wall and that's actually the hotel class um, that this Hotel Chopin is in and it's a two-star hotel and so this is a hotel that me personally because <laughs> I like to be pampered I'd be like yeah I don't know that I want to go inside there um, but yet I think it's about knowing what is possible and what isn't necessarily guaranteed back to the to the message at the very beginning we don't know so staying in this place with you know it's red so it could feel like and it's age it could feel a little bit like hell but it's you know just being a little dramatic there just uh not not literal but just being a little dramatic there it could feel like it's really not comfortable like this isn't a good place for me and yet we don't know it could be magical inside what I can see is that there's a mirror. If you look through the door, it, you know there's a mirror that's kind of front and center, and the hotel actually looks very welcoming. So it looks like a beautiful, um, honestly, a beautiful little space that's in there. Going back to the left, if you notice on top of that display of miniatures is editor, and it says, uh, um, it just says editor actually in that little red sign. And what that brings us back to the core message here is it's about expansion and contraction expansion and contraction and first of all we can't control that it's kind of like the ocean it ebbs and it flows it ebbs and it flows and we can't we can't control it you know and we can't control the expansions and the contractions that we have we can however control how we engage with the expansion and the contraction and if you're choosing this image, if you chose number three, there's this, I'm hearing slipping into a trap, slipping into a trap, thinking that you can control it, thinking that you can mindset your way out of whatever situation. And mindset, of course, is really important. And it can be a really good way to deny. <laughs> it can be a really good way to uh, suppress feelings and put them in a box and not feel them to the extent that you need to feel them. It can also be a way to stuff feelings away and not look at what you need to be looking at. So there's this whole idea of balance. There's this whole idea of not controlling. Um, again, there's so much going on in this image. So I do encourage you to take what is really screaming at you. Um, I'm noticing the lights on the right hand side, which is they're not turned on up towards the, the top right. They're not lit, but they are suggesting that the future may be really, really bright. This goes back to the we don't know.
we could go into all kinds of theories about the future, but we don't know. Those bars, last thing I want to say about this is those bars on the windows that are up at the top above the, the name Hotel Chopin is really reminiscent of how we trap ourselves, how we keep our own potential in a cage. And man, am I guilty of this. You know, I think probably we all are to some degree, or many of us are to some degree. And this is about knowing that sometimes maybe it's going into a two-star hotel, a place that doesn't feel totally comfortable, that actually allows you to take those bars off and really know yourself well and really come to a place of, of comfort within who you are without trying to control that creation process, without trying to control that creation and expansion that's inherent in life. So this is a little bit more of a windy message for the number three people because there's so much there. What I, I think I want to underscore is that the door is open. Again, we don't know what's on the inside of that hotel. We could jump to conclusions that it's not comfortable, but we don't know. And so staying in the present moment is so important, especially for you number three people. If you chose that, you may very well be going all over the place with, you know, following the news of this or the, the podcast of that or whatever, bringing it back to center, being one with that expansion and contraction and knowing that wherever you're at in that cycle, this too shall pass. And that for this moment, right now, right here, you're safe. It's okay. So that is our messages for the month of November. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me here. I do encourage you to come over to Angels Teach. I will say things are changing pretty quickly over there. Um, I'm actually feeling guidance to pause any training at the moment. I feel like there's just so much shifting uh, and my intention is to just be where I am needed and where I can serve most. And um, I am getting some guidance. I will be sharing some details. Uh, if you're not on the e email list, I do encourage you to um, bop over to angelsteach.com and get on the email list because I will be announcing some new offerings soon. Um, but it's more it's not so much about training, it's really more about just creating space to hold you, to just be in community and just um, be together through this change, through this transition. So with that, so much love to each and every one of you. Be well, I love you. See you soon.